Good afternoon, everybody. Today, me and my group present a presentation on self reliance by Ralph Walt Emerson. Here is my team. Points to ponder. I am dealing with introduction of writer. He was born at 15, 25 May 1803, Boston, U.S. and died at 27 April 1882, Concord, U.S. He was an American literature poet and uh, essayist and a uh, leading expert of New England transcendentalism. Emerson graduated from Harvard University in 1829. He was uh, become a Unitarian minister of, in uh, Harvard University. He believed in individual non-conflict and uh, the need for harmony between man and nature. Igno is a pioneer of transcendentalism in uh, America. His first book, Nature, published in 1836, influenced by a range of idealist philosophy, confirmed his future as a prose writer, establishing him as a center of transcendental movement. Contribute the transcendentalist magazine, The Dial, serving as an editor from 1842 to 1844. He is famous for his two major collection of essays. The first series of essays, which was published in 1841, and second series of essays, which was published in 1844. Self-reliance is is his most famous collection of essays. The essay were gathered from his journal and lecture and covered a period of the years. I am ending my side with a famous thought of Ralph and Emerson. Our greatest glory is not in never falling, but is missing up, rising up every time when we fail. Thank you. Now I am request to Divya Jadav to shed some light on the title of essay. A very good afternoon to everyone, respected ma'am and friend. I am going to deal with the significant of the title. Title Self Reliance is uh, significant in the conveying the central message of the essay by Ralph uh, Waldo Emerson. The essay argues that people should be, uh, believe in them and trust in the um, trust in his own instincts and uh, institutions rather than conforming to expectation of society. And uh, here we find that uh, self reliance means to be independent. And listen to what uh, our own self say. And uh, here uh, we find the image. And the title, self reliance captured that, uh, the idea, a uh, person should uh, rely on their own inner guidance uh, and uh, institutions uh, to live and uh, fulfilling life. Self-reliance is the ability to do things and make uh, decisions by your own self, instinct to rely on others. According to Emerson, self-reliance is the key to living a fulfilling and uh, authentic, li authentic life. And here we find that Emerson focus on the our personal uh, faith and uh, institutions to believe always in what our self say. Thank you, and now I would like to invite Asha. So my topic is that uh, trust in oneself. Uh, it said that uh, we should trust on uh, oneself. Emerson argued that uh, people should trust their own instincts and uh, institution rather than relying on uh, external authority or contrary to society. So we should uh, uh, follow our inner voice and uh, trust on uh, own self. Here external means uh, outside society and we should follow, uh, uh, we should not uh, follow society. And uh, non conflict means uh, uh, we believe uh, we don't believe in the rule which we making by society uh, uh, and uh, conformity means uh, we believe in uh, uh, rule which we making by society so uh, 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 Ralph Waldo said that uh, we uh, we should uh, follow uh, non conformity he believes that people have a different path uh, within them then can guide them towards their own unique path in life so um, uh, life is uh, uh, way, uh, in way of uh, uh, 
uh, we should be independent and we should follow uh, on uh, depend on own self every hearts vibrate to the that uh, iron string except the place in the divine providence has found for you the society of your contemporaries the con uh, connect of event great men have always done so and con uh, confident themselves tell like to the genius of their age uh, betraying their perception that uh, the absolutely trustworthy was was shattered at their uh, heart working um, through their hands uh, so uh, uh, it spaces uh, suggest that uh, a trust on ourself and uh, acceptance of uh, own rule in the world and uh, 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 its emphasis is the idea that uh, we should not shy uh, away from uh, uh, and uh, second is uh, individualism uh, uh, i am going to discuss this uh, with uh, 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 in behalf of hamali emerson uh, emerson says the reliance uh, uh, delves into the excesses of individualism urging individual uh, idealism to trust their instinct over society except that he champions through independence uh, encourages the uh, courage to be oneself so again he, he talk uh, about uh, follow over the innovation we should not follow crowd we should uh, f follow over uh, on uh, we should depend on on uh, 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 we should not depend on society and uh, everyone read this uh, uh, essay otherwise he uh, he uh, he has outside and other place like uh, canada america everyone uh, uh, all uh it is this uh, essay thank you hello everyone uh, uh, this uh, non conformity point and uh, second self uh, trust is uh, non conformity points uh, to normal uh, point uh, uh, she didn't come so i i take the her point Emerson says in self reliance that it's important not to just follow what everyone else is doing he thinks conforming to society's expectations stops us uh, from being true of ourselves Emerson wants us to be independent thinkers and uh, do our own thing going to against the crowd uh, of if needed now self trust emerson believes that uh, self trust is essential to self reliance he argues that people should not be swayed by the uh, options of others and uh, should have the courage to follow their own inner uh, guidance here uh, we can give a example of self trust uh, we know the anupama serials the tv show serials in uh, anupama's character uh, teaches our uh, to uh, uh, how to handle the situations and uh, when the uh, things are uncertain that time uh, we how to face the um, uh, how to face uh, this situations also okay that's from my side thank you uh, i will deal with uh, the topic self expression Uh, by the famous uh, essayist uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Uh, first of all, I would like to tell what do you, what do you mean by self-expression? Uh, so, self-expression means to express your own feelings or thought. Etc. It is known as self-expression. So, according to uh, this uh, Emerson, he believes that uh, each person should be unique. Like if other people, if they don't like or they just don't uh, like, they don't. Uh, a past uh, judgment on your whatever but you should follow your uniqueness and you should be unique and second he encourages us to trust our own feelings and thoughts to express freely and uh, lastly i would like to tell uh, according to him he tells us to that expressing yourself is showing your true colors to the world and try to be unique and different thank you
हेलो एवरी वन आई एम गोइंग टू डील विथ टू टॉपिक्स वन नेचर एंड स्पिरिचुअलिज्म वन ऑफ द ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ अक्षय स्पिरिचुअलिज्म इज टेकन बाय मी सो इमर्शन सेल्फ रियल रिलायंस एक्सप्लोर द ट्रांसेंडेंटल फिलोसॉफी एम्पोसाइजिंग इंडिविजुअल इंट्यूशन एंड इंडिपेंडेंस नेचर एंड स्पिरिचुअलिज्म both play vital role in shaping emerson's idea of self reliance uh, first of all the nature uh, nature express emerson believes nature express uh, uh, that uh, each individual individual must develop uh, a personal understanding of the universe <coughs> and uh, it also believes that uh, connecting with the nature and uh, one's inner self respect or uh, self for fosters and independence and uh, self reliance uh, nature for immersion serves a uh, source of uh, inspiration and a reflection of a divine encouraging uh, encouraging individual uh, to find their own truths and uh, uh, resist conformity uh, in a, and uh, also uh, in a spiritualism uh it's it, it involves in in a div- divinity transcendental as connection individual and spirituality uh spiritual insight uh, derived from inter- introspection and a com- com- communion with nature becomes a guiding force for those who seeking who who's who is who who are seeking self religion and immersion philosophy so now uh, more furthermore i'm i would like to hear white Thank you. So hello everyone I am going to deal with the uh, uh, themes of this essay. So the first uh, theme of the uh, transcendentalism in that uh, in this theme uh, in self reliance immersion trans- uh, transcendentalism by urging trust in personal in uh, personal insights valuing individuality over uh, conformity to societal norm and he advocates relying on unique perspective and tapping into inner intuition to connect with a transcendent truth uh, essentially the essay encourages embracing individuality for a deeper connection with oneself and the world so uh, i am going to uh, discuss the second one the unity of nature in this theme emerson explored the unity of nature highlighting the connection between individual and the natural world he believes aligning aligning with nature allows access uh, to universal truth and wisdom urging people to find inspiration in its uh, harmonious existence essentially the essay encourages to uh, recognizing nature's unity as a source of guidance for personal growth and understanding uh, the third theme the importance of uh, self reliance in self reliance emerson stresses the significance of self reliance as the key to personal growth and fulfillment and uh, he emphasizing the importance of trusting one's of own instincts and beliefs rather than relying on external influences or con- uh, conforming to societal expectation immersion also uh, co- uh, contends uh, that a true independence leads to uh, more authentic and meaningful life and uh, the in the in this essay uh, he in also encourages individuals to have confidence in their unique perspectives and ability forcing a sense of st- uh, self trust and empowerment ultimately emerson's message it uh, is a clear that embracing self reliance is essential for personal success and uh, gen- uh, gentle and happiness uh, in the fourth uh, theme the limit uh, the limits of science in the in this essay emerson also discuss the limits <coughs> of science nothing its value but emphasizing boundaries in grasping deeper aspects of life and he also suggests that over reliance on science may restrict understanding spiritual and initiative insight immersion advocates trusting inner wisdom beyond miserable aspects explored by science urging a balance between reason and institution 
pursue understanding and combining scientific inquiry with a deeper connection with oneself. So, for for further more conclusion of the our presentation, I would like to call Mr. Darshan. So, in conclusion, uh, the essay Self Reliance by Wildo Emerson is uh, uh, passionately advocating the, uh, embrace, to embrace the individu individuality and he, it urges us to not uh, blindly conform to the societal norms and uh, it encourages us to trust our instincts and our uniqueness. According to the Emerson, uh, genuine greatness comes by being ourselves and rather than coming to the external expectations, uh, he emphasizes that he emphasizes on relying on our own judgment and our embracing our true self, our authentic selves, uh, for personal fulfillment and long-lasting uh, success. In essence, Emerson's uh, message is a powerful call for uh, independence, and it un encourages us to chart our own course and find fulfillment in being true to ourselves. So that is all. And I will end this presentation with a quote from late Emerson. To be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make yourself, ma make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. And on behalf of my team, thank you for your attention. Hello everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, solitude. Uh, this essay, Solitude by Henry David Thoreau. This is the group presentation uh, assigned by Vede Hime. Uh, uh, this is my whole team. I deal with uh, introduction and uh, Henry David Thoreau uh, brief information. Solitude is an essay which is written by Henry David Thoreau. Henry David Thoreau's overall message through this essay is it is a more of a state of mind than something uh, real. People around by the other people would feel more loneliness than people who are physically alone. For uh, Thoreau being in a solitude is the best way to discover your mind and spirituality and is the best way to know yourself. Uh, David Thoreau uh, timeline 1872 1862. Uh, Henry David Thoreau was born in Concord on July 12, 1870. He was American essayist, poet, philosopher, and naturalist. He was a prominent figure in transcendentalist movement, uh, advocating for spiritual self discovery and deep connection with nature. Uh, major work. Uh, Two major works, Civil Disobedience uh, and second, Walden or Life in the Wood. First, Civil, uh, sorry, Civil Disobedience uh, published in 1849, uh, written by Henry David Thoreau. In this essay, uh, Thoreau argued for uh, non-violent resistance on just law and government. He advocates individual conscience and moral autonomy encouraging people to their own principle over obeying laws they find unjust. And second work, Walden or Life in the Wood, published in 1854, uh, written by uh, Henry David Thoreau. In this uh, essay, uh, uh, Thoreau experiment in transcendentalist living in Walden Pond. Uh, in detail, his reflection on simplicity, self-reliance and beauty of nature 
Thoreau explored the idea of intentional living and the pursuit of meaningful existence through a connection with the natural world. He died on May 6, 18, uh, 1862 at the age of 44, leaving a lasting legacy as a thinker, writer and environmentalist. Uh, further information I would like to call Ria Bhatt. Very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, uh, for furthermore, uh, the transcendentalism. What is transcendentalism? It is an 19th century movement of writers and philosophers in New England. Uh, and uh, we also know that what is uh, the uh, verbal meaning of transcendentalism? To go beyond uh, something or imagination. And uh, transcendentalism exactly means in this essay is solitude by uh, living lonely. Uh, we can say that uh, in Gujarati we have this uh, word ekalta. Koi na ekalta zank hai, to koi na jis hai ekalta dunk thi hoy. To person to person transcendentalism no uh, concept hai. Uh, okay, the concept of transcendentalism is different to person to person. Uh, okay, uh, the in uh, innate goodness of humanity and supremacy of uh, insight over logic and experience for the uh, revelation and deepest truth. Uh, here, transcendentalism, uh, we find that by, by the uh, solitude, the central theme that we find that intention, uh, intentional isolation, uh, that we find that Thoreau himself isolated uh, near a, a Walden Pound in a cabin for uh, emphasizing the value of uh, this solitude, uh, uh, individual anatomy. Next, mm, Thoreau uh, comment uh, to individualism, rejecting social uh, exertion uh, in favor of personal anatomy uh, for, uh, by this uh, essay, Solitude, that we find, and nature and uh, spiritual reflection, solid, uh, solitude, let Thoreau uh, connect deeply with nature, uh, completing uh, life, simplicity and beauty. Okay, so that's it from my side. Uh, further, I would like to invite Rahul. So I am dealing with nature and solitude topic uh, point. Uh, Thoreau was a prominent figure in the transcendentalist movement and uh, which celebrate the importance of nature and uh, solitude in human life and uh, how he impact on the human nature and uh, its uh, thinking process. Uh, uh, philosophical significance of nature uh, very well proved by uh, uh, Henry David Thoreau in this essay. He initi initially lived a simple life near nature and Walden Pond. Uh, uh, Walden Pond. Thoreau viewed nature as a source of inspiration and uh, new thinking and uh, knowledge of uh, new content. <coughs> nature and solitude's uh, great impact on Thoreau's thinking process and his thoughts. The nature environment served as a uh, profound source of uh, solitude, a century where he could uh, retreat from the complexity of societal life. He very well uh, lived in simple life and believed in simple uh, thoughts and uh, recovering the uh, major thinking process of uh, and work on own self. Uh, Thoreau's uh, solitude is initially linked with the uh, serenes and untouched beauty of natural world. He believed in natural world, not uh, like uh, uh, he lived uh, always alone and work on own self and uh, his creativity and uh, thinking process. So here in my such country, I would like to call uh, Jai Shri.
good afternoon everyone i am going to discuss reflection and first discovery in uh, Th thoreau's uh, essay solitude golden pond and its surrounding wilderness become an immersive backdrop of his contemplation and such discovery as rahul mentioned about golden uh, golden pond that is a place uh, this uh, surrounded by nature so where he lived two years of his life and he got golden or uh, the life in a wood the environment itself become an essential element of the solitude he sought fostering a deep connection between his inner reflection and the serene unspoiled beauty of the landscape he believed individuals could achieve a deeper understanding of themselves unburdened by social expectations and enriched by the simplicity of contemplative solitude for example if we if we see in our life that if we uh, we go to a, a trip or a any place uh, which is surrounded by nature so we can feel that uh, everything is going right even though we have so many problems in our life but still we think that everything is right when we are surrounded by nature so here is the quote that says i never found the companion that was so companionable as solitude in world now i would like to call jay solanki for further more good afternoon to everyone uh, now i will dealing with the embracing individualism that uh, in this uh, individualism how uh, solitude connect and uh, how we can uh, connect idea of uh, in this essay so celebration of independence and self real realize take center stage econing his transcendentalism thanks transcendentalist belief emphasize the transformative power of the self reflection and solitude he contented by withdrawing from the noise of society individual in universal can discover their authentic self and culture a deep sense of independence thoreau's advocacy advocacy for self reliance is uh, rooted in uh, the idea that individual possess a innate wisdom that can guide their lives through in introspecting in solitude one can tap into inner wisdom and forge a path based on personal value rather than conforming to societal norms thoreau suggested that social societal expectations often stifle individuality solitude then uh, becomes a sanctuary where uh, individuals can liberate themselves from external judgment and expectation now i would like to uh, invite priyanshi for further reading good afternoon everyone i am dealing with this topic spiritual growth in solitude in henry david thoreau walden the author vividly illustrated the concept of spiritual growth in solitude through his own so own transcendent experience in the solitude of the woods near walden pond thoreau embraced a deliberate simplicity of life and distancing himself from the from the complexities of society through solitude he sought a deeper connection with nature viewing it as mean as a means of understanding the essence of existence thoreau's daily communion with the nature natural surroundings became a form form of meditation for a thing of a profound introspection in solitude i found the silence that speaks louder than the noise of the world revealing the spiritual whispers of nature thoreau inspired by transcendentalism ideals suggested that by immersing oneself in solitude away from the distraction of society individuals can uh, can attune themselves to the subtle rhythms of the universe thoreau teaches us that uh, solitude isn't an absence but a presence a presence of the divine that unfolds when we are undisturbed by the clamor of societal demands so i would like to call chai good afternoon everyone i am 
good afternoon afternoon or everyone a contrast to modern society in a contrast to modern society for implicitly critique the frantic fashion material materialistic pursuit of contemporary life for is exploration of solitude a purpose in <coughs> alternative to the social pressure and artificial desire that dominant modern existence for suggest that retreating into solitude is not an act of es- escapism but a deliberate choice to reconnect with uh, authenticity by distancing oneself for the superficiality of social norms individual can rediscover their true selves and live on live on harmony with uh, nature simplicity now uh, now conclusion part of this one my conclusion um, thoru is writing a solitude to persuade his audience that living alone in close communi- <coughs> communion with nature is good for the body mind and soul using smile thoru compares his a uh, serenity to take uh, to lack a clam surface and compares the friendliness he feels from nature to an atmosphere that sustains him uh, many points uh, by uh, solitude explained by this guys uh, in a uh, through his explorations of nature and in uh, interceptions he invites used to embrace the transformative power of solitude in finding uh, meaning and connections in the world thank you uh, our uh, teams to uh, grateful to you thank you Good afternoon everyone uh, so our group will make presentation on the uh, great lawsuit by margaret fuller uh, first uh, i will start with the introduction of margaret fuller uh, she was born on 1810 cambridge and she was one of the uh, uh, one of the american critic writer and women's right activist uh, in, and she influenced uh, most of her contemporary writers and she was one of the significant personality in the american uh, american history uh, american history and culture and she was one of the uh, feminist and she published uh, more than 300 plus essays into uh, through her lifetime and she was educated at very early age and severely by his uh, father and at the early age she gained so much vast knowledge and she was extremely intellectual she had knowledge about almost every field uh, such as art every arts literature political science uh, and all and through the lifetime uh, he gained the friend he befriended many co- uh, american contemporary writers such as uh, emerson uh, elizabeth palmer henry david thoreau and william ellery chami and her one of the most influential work was the uh, and that was never published uh, net, never completed as well a biography of the john uh, john wolfgang goth and let's move uh, towards the essay the great law suit uh, this essay stand as a fem- uh, femin- feminism fe- feminist work uh, in stand for the women and it was one of the co- uh, important contribution to the transcendentalist movement uh, as we know the transcend what the what it means to is tra- transcendentalism but according to the oxford uh, dictionary the transcendentalism is a idealistic and a philosophical movement that arose in uh, 1836 and which is arose in new england and it is against the uh, it is a uh, reaction against the rationalism and it is also influenced by the romanticism and uh, kantian philosophy and romanticism in platonism as well so the main aim of the uh, uh, margaret fuller was is the manifesto uh, 
manifesto of manifesto is a call for equality of the sexes in this essay margaret fuller margaret fuller has called for the uh, equality of the sexes like there are uh, arguments for the both for men and women both uh, and her argument is not for only good for women but good for men as well uh, as a woman she was writing in the male world and was uh, as we meant as i mentioned earlier she was well informed about all the literature and philosophy and all the things and uh, she was uh, self she said that self interest may triumph where principles have failed as we know that the center of the transcendentalism is the individual and she she had an in, androgynous view of the uh, human psyche that there is no wholly masculine man and no purely feminine women and she also emphasized on the education of the women as well and she asserted that we must have units before we can have the union and furthermore there is the uh, metaphor of the journey the metaphor the journey is a journey of human kind like uh, the empath she made emphasis on the uh, enlightenment enlightenment of the human mind uh, and the main goal of the uh, main goal of the mankind was uh, was to attain the perfection and for that the humanity struggles from the ages like we have uh, the age of enlightenment that she uh, she has the historical sense and uh, she conveyed that humans struggle for understanding enlightenment and the fulfillment of the, its own potential and there is further point of the inheritance by the mean of inheritance one we can get the idea of the material things like land money and all the things but according to margaret fuller the inheritance which means uh, is not uh, this kind of exclusive uh, ex exclusive things but the benefits of the all the living things like nature and all things and all the challenges and conflict uh, faced by the human uh, by the humanity and so this is the journey of humanity and she also praises the uh, all the all the contributors in uh, open the secret of love like all the artists philosophers historians scientists which means they describe the diversity of life and the divine presence throughout the history and universal potential for the greatness in the diverse life and lasting potential of the individual and uh, at last she also made a point that we uh, as individual connected with the god the god is a supreme being and this god is a central central thing in the nature and humanity often falls but uh, despite of all these things humanity she says that often falls asleep because an a uh, self selfishness take over the human so this is it for the side for further discussion i would call bhumi okay so further in the essay uh, fuller discusses the anticipation of a new era she suggests as we talked about metaphor of a journey so she suggests that now there is a need for new era and there is a tussle between mind and heart because mind of people have not yet comprehended this need while hearts are yearning for it and she also suggests the concept of ministry of men this explores the role of individuals in purifying atmosphere preserving bodies from corruption and keeping souls pure from negative influence now for a further step in our journey she gives the example of the myth of orpheus and the sacrifice of love orpheus is used as a symbol of uh, a lawgiver and a lover and she suggests that all the poets and all the people of the world need to be like orpheus and with this uh, myth of orpheus she also says about development of women she says that uh, the lover of orpheus which is eurydice she also now needs to seek for her right and with the help of women the man will be developed more and she talks about uh, how as the understanding of our liberty expands there is a need for equality and we can see this in french revolution where women were finally recognized as equal citizens but this was still not quite equal because uh, they were considered still considered uh, lesser than others and uh, there is also a misuse of jesus and cross so both of them are a symbol of peace but uh, they are used for a contradicting thing they are used as a symbol as uh, to oppress others especially native americans and black individuals so fuller suggests a private use of religion where uh, people don't influence uh, negative aspects of their religion onto others 
and with this she says that as african people american people as they fought for their right they believe and they demand for women's right as well because they have seen that uh, struggle but there is a tension in the society because people are not yet ready for the demand and uh, fulla also gives the um, opposing point of view so the people who do not believe in women's right they often accuse them of disrupting the family unit they say that uh, because of this uh, the women are taken away from the traditional wives role so there is a breakage or in the family unit uh, for further exploration of the essay i would like to call dhatri okay so as uh, i men- mentioned in the introduction that uh, there are a patriarchy and hierarchical uh, uh, kind of a thing that ha- happening in the society margaret is uh, advo- advocating this kind of a thing that there is a challenge for the women in the society on the other hand she uh, emphasized upon the legal protection and property rights and this is the very basic things with which women can get equality in the society so she uses a mer- multiple examples even a conversational tone in the essay for uh, emphasizing upon the legal protection and rights of women and in uh, she also stresses that uh, free agency of the women can give uh, access to the world so there are a kind of a thing that women and children are using in a similar term so they are using as a fragile so who, who is not able to survive in the society so she is advocating this in the essay introduced the concept of women in street so uh, she says that every field needs women equal contribution in each of the field so uh, she says that if women came in the street we uh, at, the, at that time at her time how people are looking at that and uh, it is a need for a women to come into the street come into the uh, uh, margin uh, from the margin from the uh, to the center for their development uh, also she uh, uh, quite masterfully give an example gives an example of that that lover poet and art, artist uh, how they uh, view women they view women uh, they view women as a noble on the other hand a uh, father and philosopher they view women as a liberty so they they giving them liberty on the other hand she bitterly criticizes men and legislator who are in a, a kind of a officer and they they say that they say women as a restrictive they say that women no need to go into the street and no need to uh, equal contribution of that in that case and uh, she says that uh, women uh, even every human being need inward and uh, outward both kind of freedom so freedom from the mind as well and freedom for the outer side and she says that all souls are uh, universal appeal for that and she says that there is no son in the society like no son of any officer no son of any authority but only one son and that is the son of god she uh, giving a view upon a uh, jesus that uh, he is the only one and we have to follow uh, him in the, that context and that is why uh, there is no kind of any privilege to any one particular gender so that is why she is saying that every soul is equal and uh, envision the society where women can contribute equally across spheres and she uh, beautifully advocates the women's uh, contribution in inheritance in having a legal rights and having a homes and uh, equally contributed in every field okay now for further i would like to invite kavita empowering mirinda a castle life of change mirinda mirinda a lady to example of in this essay in this essay in the uh, she was uh, emphasize her upbringing uh, with her father who believe in equality of uh, sexes mirinda's father treated her as a uh, uh, individual uh, free and a uh, key trait for mirinda mirinda self reliance dignified sense of uh, independence and her relation with both men and women a challenging gender roles meridian's uh, life's uh, own experience are present as a example of challenging in traditional gender roles 
means in the world uh, merinda suffer in the traditional gender roles is uh, like a, a, a lady a boy and girl is a treat is a different way some uh, restriction in the people are follow here as like a lady or a woman is a uh, uh, leave is like a homemaker and uh, working and a uh, uh, main is like a ma uh, masculine and power in her hand uh, so perception of women it criticizes the tendency to judge women based on a superficial quality rather than appreciating their intellectual and emotional strength. Role of men in shaping perceptions according to uh, acknowledge male's role influence societal attitudes. And uh, that uh, male are also to help is uh, a woman to uh, give a flourishing and a uh, uh, open-minded atmosphere to give her a shift in societal attitudes. Advocate for a change in attitude toward women and highlight uh, society uh, hi highlights historical struggle and. Uh, the need for uh, recognition also she was and uh, like a woman is like a celebrity or uh, other thing heroine is like a, and a main were uh, shift her attitude toward the woman and uh, last promote self respect uh, emphasize the importance of self respect of woman increasing acknowledge by the stereotypical role i would like to now kusum So Margaret Fuller continues with uh, 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 to introduce us with her God-like or uh, the divine character, uh, who is on earth just because to uh, uh, just because to rep uh, represent the truth and love. Woman is a messenger of truth and love. Ancient nations, the idea of woman was normally manifested. It was not a uh, this this time when uh, when uh, when uh, government has to uh, they launched uh, many. Uh, empowering for the woman, but it was from uh, from uh, ancient time that a girl or a woman were uh, always ahead of man. In a novel, in a novelly manifested, uh, this novelly manifested. Uh, here I want to mention a podcast of Akshay Gupta. Uh, Akshay Gupta, sorry, Akshay Gupta. He says in his uh, one of his podcast that uh, women's in our uh, in our culture, in our tradition, uh, in our mythology, women are always ahead of um, uh, ahead of men. Like we can say in the in, uh, names of God, we always say Radha Krishna instead of Krishna Radha. We always say Gauri Shankar, Lakshmi Ran. So this uh, Lakshmi Naran. So this all the uh, in context we can say the women are always ahead of a man, whether it is God or whether it is a common person. The term goddess is, uh, as I say, that uh, there is a God, yes. But why we need a term goddess is just to say that women are also exist and they also can become a uh, great like a God. Male and female are distinct in expression, but equal in beauty, strength, and calmness. Yes, we have uh, that uh, dialogue that mars ko kabhi dard nahi hota, but no, it is uh, ye hota hai, uh, hota hai. So uh, they both are they both are same in expression and expression, and uh, they uh, equal in beauty, strength, and calmness. So here it is uh, according to Margaret that the boys can also beautiful. Women is not a part of man, but a bone of his bone. Here, uh, uh, women, uh, you know, uh, this is uh, we. Uh, Margaret says that uh, the bo um, man and women are the called uh, that that both are uh, one side, uh, uh, two sides of one coin. They both are inevitable for each, and they both are uh, uh, important for each other. Uh, this is a quote of uh, quote of Margaret Fuller. Ye cannot believe it, man. But the only reason why women ever assume that is more appropriate to you is because you prevent them from finding finding out what is fit for themselves. It is kind of a, we can say that a complaining tone and she quests for a freedom uh, of women. So further this uh, will help by uh, Maya. Good afternoon, everyone. I am going to discuss about um, uh, Margaret Fuller, the great love. Some poet, uh, woman's strength. 
In the great low suit, Margaret Fuller explored the societal constant placed on women in the 19th century. Elizabeth, as depicted, depicted by Fuller, showcases strength in her pursuit of her personal and intellectual freedom. Despite her strength, Elizabeth's character does not undermine her role as a wife and mother. Literary influence of Elizabeth. Examine how having a female sovereignty like Queen Elizabeth impacts writers' thought and the course of literature. Portrayal of heroic women in literature. Compare the representation of heroic women in Spencer, Shakespeare, Ford, and Messenger's works. Example, examples from literature. Colonel Hutchinson's love stops short of idolatry. Spanish story of, story of Justin resisting temptation. Modern marriages dilemmas. Civilized, civilized Europe remains in transition about marriage in both practice and thought. Many society and individual question whether marriage is a union or soul of merely a conventional contract. Thank you. Hello everyone. Thank you Maya. Uh, now I am going to uh, deal with the themes in modern marriages. Uh, uh, in Margaret Fuller's essay, she emphasizes on that uh, how marriages and how uh, vivid dynamics uh, uh, affects marriages. Uh, it focuses on intellectual and companionship in marriages. We can say that in modern times, uh, uh, everyone prior uh, prioritizes that shared interest, not that traditional uh, wife and husband but they uh, share their uh, interests uh, like uh, uh, when doctor reads doctor and uh, we are literature students so let's take example like uh, they uh, they feel uh, comfortable or they uh, build bond by uh, uh, talking uh, liter any on uh, any literary topics or um, and attending any mushaira so uh, it focuses on intellectual companionship uh, like uh, uh, we can say uh, and uh, Fuller give example of Mary Wollstonecraft and uh, Godwin Go uh, Godwin George Sand. Like uh, they uh, also had that intellectual companionship, uh, uh, trust and shared faith and purpose. Like uh, trust forms a foundation of uh, modern marriages, uh, coupled with a shared belief system and a common life purpose. This might involve supporting each other's career goal, raising a family leader or pursuing shared hobbies, creating a strong sense of unity like uh, not only that uh, they quarrel with each other but uh, that uh, mutual understanding that trust trust is the base of any uh, healthy relationship uh, so uh, it, in modern marriages we can find trust and faith faith from both sides is a uh, main or focus of uh, their life uh, evolving gender roles in intellectual uh, partnership like we can say that uh, fuller encourages women to embrace intellectual pursuits on an equal footing with men not uh, uh, women uh, walk on footsteps of uh, behind the footsteps of uh, men but equal footing with men uh, modern marriages lif uh, sorry reflects this with uh, evolving gender roles and shared decision making like not uh, that patriarchy uh, type that uh, men take all the decisions and women uh, women must obey him but they both uh, equally uh, equally take uh, decisions of their life uh, uh, they uh, leading decision making, uh, decision making, uh, share their responsibilities of home and work, and encouraging each other's personal growth without any rigid or uh, traditional uh, adherence to traditional gender norms. Uh, next, we can say that acceptance of diverse marriage dynamics. Fuller calls to break societal norms aligned with the modern marriages, embracing diverse relationship structure. Uh, 
couples uh, shape their relationship authentically deviating from uh, traditional norms they increasing acceptance of diverse marriage dynamics we can say that uh, they live uh, some couples may not live in a traditional uh, joint family they uh, wanted to live uh, separate from a tra joint family or big family or uh, in some cases they also live separate from each other but they had that strong connection with them uh, we can say that uh, this type of social breaking norms we see in the key and ka also. Uh, uh, next one is religious union as a shared journey. Like uh, Fuller underscores that spiritual and intellectual growth of bringing in individuals to embark on shared journey to self-discovery and enlightenment. Like some tell that uh, marriage is a uh, religious uh, way to uh, share our life together. Success in partnership with understanding and support. Like uh, we, we can one partner support another partner to uh, grow in their career. Like we can say that example of uh, Suraj from Diya or Bhati. Like he cannot pursue uh, uh, any major career but he supports Sandhya to become <coughs> IPS officer. Uh, acknowledgement, acknowledgement of female author breaking barriers. Like Fuller call for women to assist intellectual capabilities aligns with her modern marriages acknowledging and celebrating female uh, achievements couple engaging discussions like uh, we we also discuss about uh, mary wilson craft uh, we can take example of her also that uh, she breaking that uh, uh, traditional norms of marriages and uh, yeah that's it from my side thank you and now i would like to call Drupti for further discussion Empowering women, education, societal perceptions, and spiritual growth. Educational disparities. In educational disparities, we can see uh, there is a lack of thoughtful education for women. Like women have to teach only Latin and Greek. Uh, that is not helpful in uh, her life. And also women get, didn't get the chance for uh, education as a man. So second is the woman in education. A uh, woman also get a chance to teach, but there is a lack of uh, innovation and uh, societal norms that is uh, that is uh, impact its effectiveness. So the third one is uh, societal influence. Despite good education, societal norms often contradict female empowerment gained through education. Self dependence. In self-dependence, uh, we can see that old women were there and uh, old women are mostly unmarried and uh, they survive as a household and do work from other in uh, work in others' homes. And that is how they can she can help the society and survive. Spiritual dignity. In spiritual dignity, the people can accept spiritual growth for women. Women gave spiritual contribution and uh, mentioning figures like Joanna Southcourt and Mother Anne uh, They both are uh, spiritual uh, ladies and they gave a very significant contribution to the at that time of uh, era. Uh, so last one is magnetism and women's intuition. The potential of women electrical and magnetical elements including rapid and correct intuition is discussed. Now I would like to call Unnati for further information. So yes, I deal with the reflections on the evolving role and potential of women in this society. Uh, uh, the first one is the freedom and reflection, the unique position of women in society. Like the here it discusses about that it is more favorable situation for women compared to men. They are uh, they are like uh, accepted. Uh, the women are uh, looked always as they are having a luxurious life, uh, reading books and uh, have nothing to do. But that is not so, and uh, they are they have less uh, pressure for success compared to the men and when looking towards the another that is the evolution of perception women and life purpose 
that is uh, it, here it highlights about the goodness and independent uh, of societal expectations here the uh, girl example let's take an example that here is a young girl who's uh, questioning about that uh, how uh, will uh, what is the purpose of the life here is uh, always a girl is treated that you have to behave in a well mannered and uh, your gestures uh, should be in a um, proper uh, manner so it hints here about the stereotypical like uh, um, and potential of further progress in gender equality you can see here then uh, ideal womanhood uh, power of women's conscience you will see that um, maternal and paternal roles a woman can also uh, uh, what you can say that uh, fulfill this role uh, very precisely like uh, in one of the uh, american social reformer that is uh, abby kelly is uh, um, working for the african enslaved in america uh, especially for the women that uh, uh, he, uh, she spoke publicly about uh, the uh, conscience of the women and another is the quiet heroism dr changing's vision for women here what uh, dr changes is uh, keeping the woman as a heroism like uh, is giving a woman a mild nature of true heroism is giving title to a woman that uh, feminine qualities with masculine qualities he is trying to contrast the feminine qualities with that masculine one and uh, he a preach uh, uh, doctor changing here is a preacher who is a uh, uh, religious uh, uh, who doctor changing religious perspective emphasis equality and uh, towards individual promoting the pursuit of great truths a uh, counter of change women's advancement and empowerment here is one of a great legend who is mentioning that uh, uh, empowerment of women linking it to the establishment of love and peace and the gentleness a praised ideals of marriage here is uh, kinmont is a great uh, legend who is uh, mentioning this and then the dual nature of women that is new and minor will that is uh, the here we can, he is comparing the ancient concept of muse that is the inspiration and the mina is the intelligence he is trying to highlight the two aspects of women's nature over here and yes the uh, theme is all about the women's uh, potential and that is uh, trying to bring uh, bring the positive change yes, so thank you that's from my side and now i would to call yash raj Uh, thank you, Unnati. Uh, now we are uh, going to discuss more about the essay. Uh, the first uh, thing that uh, empowering through the inner strength. So the breaking the old tradition and uh, expectation of societal norms. Women can get out of from that society and the norms that is been situated on uh, that is has to be followed by the woman. So we can uh, women can uh, get out from uh, that societal norms only by uh, empowering uh, herself. a limitation imposed by a man it is like uh, the when a uh, woman married to the man it it, 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 it looks like she become the slave of us so that uh, at that time in uh, 1840s uh, we find that type of concept so uh, we should get out of from the, that idea uh, in the second topic uh, critical societal uh, uh, conscience uh, fuller says about like uh, the man's influence on the woman and the uh, woman should grow as an individual what type of thoughts are coming into her mi- uh, her mind and what type of thinking she possesses and what type of uh, career she wants to go into so it would be uh, uh, by her choice and uh, she also discuss about the patriarchal society that how types of what type of norms are being uh, imposed on the women uh, call for self discovery uh, ex- uh, exploring their own essence like women should explore their own uh, essence and uh, be uh, independent in the way of thinking as well as in the behavior also uh, she also get some of the examples of uh, goethe uh, johann goethe was the german poet playwright novelist and uh, critic his diverse female characters like uh, mariana uh, makeria and migrant uh, they are the character which is like uh, ahead of them uh, their time uh, 
and uh, Goethe wonderfully ex uh, explained how women should be in the uh, in his contemporary world. And we also he also talks about the example of Dorothy, the first uh, uh, sister, and how they both are uh, uh, contribute into the poetry. So uh, that we also. Have. Now, familiar relationship. Uh, uh, Fuller talks about the familiar relation between the father and the daughter. How they are uh, in the very from the beginning that that love relationship is, is there. But when uh, uh, there is limitation uh, when uh, daughter's education for the sake of marriage. When she wants to get married and then uh, it is the stopping of the education. So we find that topic here. And uh, in the last few paragraphs, he talks about the envisioning. The harmonious world, freedom, truth, and love for uh, for the woman and equality, and how they should be uh, like equal men and women, and optimism for uh, empowered women. Women will empower others, and like we also have that uh, in college time, we also get that example. If woman get ed gets education, the whole family is getting education. So we find that thing. And uh, now in the conclusion, we can say to uh, summarize the essay, we can say. that a woman should not be defined simply through her relationship with a man instead a woman should seek her life's purpose individually through her own journey before ever seeking commun communion in any uh, relationship with man so woman has to find its own uh, individuality uh, here is the uh, uh, further references for reading and uh, thank you